If the P's and Q's don't agree, well, then you have that third degree. If the P's and the Q's don't agree, then you got that third degree. Third degree block, also known as complete heart block, is the most deadly of all AV blocks, leading to cardiac arrest and ultimately death. Now, third degree block occurs when impulses from the atria are completely blocked at the AV node and can't be conducted to the ventricles. Now, it's super serious because the ventricles are pumping very, very slowly. This means less perfusion, low to no oxygen, or in fancier terms, low cardiac output. So what's really going on in the body? Well, as you guys know, the heart has one main pacemaker and two backup pacemakers. In this case, conduction originates in the SA node like normal, but then conduction stops through that AV node. In essence, it's completely blocked. Using our five steps, let's interpret this EKG. So the rate's gonna be slow, 40 to 60 beats per minute. The rhythm's gonna be regular, but P waves and QRSs are contracting independently. P wave is upright and normal duration. The PR interval varies. This is huge and very crucial, so write this down. P's and Q's don't agree. They're working separately. Step number five, the QRS may be normal or wide, basically greater than those three mini boxes. But the huge point here is that the SA node is making P waves, but the P's and Q's don't agree. They're basically not talking anymore. They're pretty much like seeing other people. It's over between them. Who would have thought there'd be so much drama between, you know, a little P wave and big QRS? I guess the moral of the story is that if the P's and Q's don't agree, then you got that third degree. So what are the major causes of all major heart blocks? Well, they all stem from ineffective pump or drugs that slow the heart. So first, a medication side effect from drugs that slow the heart this is known as our negative chronotropic drugs. So chrono meaning time, so negative time, basically less pumps per minute. Drugs like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, as well as digoxin, also called digitalis. One of the last major causes is a history of an MI, or basically that heart attack. Now this causes tissue death and ineffective pump, basically leading to less oxygen to the body. Just like nearly all other ugly cardiac dysrhythmias, the heart isn't pumping correctly. So guys, less cardiac output, less oxygen. Symptoms will look exactly like all the other heart blocks, but a little bit worse. Actually, a lot worse with complete block. We'll see complaints like collapse, our cool little acronym to describe all the problems that low oxygen gives our patients. And yes, guys, we did spell it wrong on purpose. So one quick thing to remember, whether we have first degree all the way down to third degree, is that signs and symptoms that we're going to mention right now, they get a lot worse as we start marching toward third degree. Usually first degree, we don't see these signs and symptoms as apparent as third degree. So the C stands for chest pain from that low oxygen. O is for oxygen saturation that is lowered. L is for lethargy or fatigue. A is for anxiety usually caused by lack of oxygen. P is from palpitations that's described as a racing of the heart. Kind of feels like gelatin of the chest. S is for shortness of breath or dyspnea, that difficulty breathing. Now, guys, pay attention right here because this is where it differs a lot. Now, E is from an even or extra slow heart rate, usually in third degree block. Now, guys, third degree block, also called complete heart block, is known for having a bradycardic heart rate, usually less than 60 beats per minute but sometimes less than 40 beats per minute. So guys, extra slow, then it's probably third degree heart block. Now guys, that's the biggest indication of the third degree block, that low, low heart rate. And finally guys, D stands for dizziness and syncope, which is also called fainting or passing out, and it's caused by low oxygen. Now guys, again, the symptoms will progressively get worse as the blocks progress. So first degree block usually has no signs or symptoms. Second degree block can have some symptoms, but guys, the majority of the symptoms that you see here above are in third degree block, the big complete heart block. So guys, write that down. Now, sometimes it could be without signs and symptoms, but those cases are very, very rare. So what are we gonna do about it? Now, guys, before we start memorizing all the nursing interventions and all those treatments, Always ask yourself, what is the main goal for the patient? 
In this case, we want to reset and restore that AV node to normal function. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the causes, stop or decrease the dose that's slowing the heart rate. So guys, those beta blockers, those calcium channel blockers, and that digoxin, those negative chronotropic drugs that decrease the heart rate. Now, if that doesn't fix the problem, then we'll stimulate that AV node by giving it atropine to increase the heart rate, dopamine to increase the blood pressure, and then epinephrine to increase both the heart rate and BP by vasoconstricting or basically squeezing down those blood vessels, kind of like toothpaste, which increases cardiac output, which is basically that oxygen to the body, mainly to the vital organs like the heart and also the brain. Now, if that doesn't work, we're gonna have to replace that AV node with a pacemaker, basically a little robot machine that keeps electrical impulses in the heart to take over the job that our body's node is failing to do. Well, guys, that wraps up third degree complete heart block. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.